Okay, today I want to talk about progressive web apps and what exactly is a progressive web app. So there's a whole bunch of different criteria that you should meet for your app to be considered a progressive web app. And I'm going to go through those and explain uh, some of the development tools that go along with it and some of the files that go along with this and exactly what it is so that you're able to start building them. First of all, capable. Now, progressive web app being capable means that it's taking advantage of HTML5 APIs that have been added over the last 10 years or so, things that will make your website run as close as possible to native. So access to the file API, uh, IndexedDB, geolocation, uh, there's web Bluetooth and web USB now. Uh, we can do 2D and 3D rendering on the canvas and using WebGL. Um, push notifications, private caches, all kinds of different things that are uh, now available to websites through JavaScript. So that's capable. Reliable, well, if you're running a website, you're on your mobile device, you've lost Wi-Fi, typically a website is going to stop running because it no longer has a connection to the internet. But with service workers, and if we come into the development tools, go over to the application section, there's a service worker section. This is a JavaScript file that you attach to your website. So you put it at the root of your website and it's kind of a, a JavaScript file that's running in its own thread. It's running all by itself and it's in charge of managing the entire website. So anytime any request from the website comes through the service worker, it can decide if it's going to go to the cache. So down here, we've got cache storage. This is a private cache for this domain, for this origin. And we can save files here so that our app can run when you're offline, when you've lost your Wi-Fi connection. All right, so that's reliable, installable. There's certain criteria that you have to meet for your app to be installable. One is that you have to have a service worker. Um, and there's a new feature coming out this summer, or not feature, a new requirement coming out this summer, uh, wherein if you make a fetch call from the web page and the service worker intercepts that, it needs to return a valid response of some sort to prove that it is actually doing something when you're disconnected, when you're offline. Uh, you need to have a web manifest file. And that's something else that we can find over here in the application tab, right here, manifest. This is a manifest.json file, or you can have a .manifest file extension as well. It's where you put a whole, it's a JSON file, and you can put a whole bunch of settings, things like, if I've installed this app, here's the name or the short version of the name. Here's the theme color for the Chrome at the top. Here's background color for the pages, uh, default orientation, whether or not you're going to show the Chrome, that's the display property. And then there's launcher icons that you can create so that regardless of where it's being installed, you have launcher icons. Engagement heuristic. So this is the person has spent a certain amount of time on the page. They've interacted with the website. They've scrolled, they've clicked, they've done something. It's not just instantaneously as soon as the page loads. Hey, do you want to install my app? We need to meet some sort of engagement with the user. And finally, there is actually a test built in here. Firefox has one and uh, Chrome does as well called Lighthouse here. This is the test for whether or not you have a progressive web app. So in the categories right here, we've got progressive web app. And if we run that, it's going to run through a whole bunch of tests. Now I'm going to fail because I don't have a service worker on here, but it tries online, it tries offline, it tries different um, sizes of screens and so on. And you can see right here, some things I passed, some things I failed. And you want to get these green dots or check marks all the way down this list to say that, yes, I've met the requirements of being a progressive web app. All right, so we got to jump back to where we were here. After uh, installable comes secure. And with secure, what we want to do is service workers must run over HTTPS. So you have to use HTTPS if you're going to build a progressive web app because they need to have a service worker. Um, a lot of the HTML5 APIs have also started to require that you have HTTPS. 
example of that being geolocation. You have to have HTTPS. Now, most of them do have the exception that if you are running on localhost, so if localhost or 127.0.0.1, if that's the requirement up here, then, or, sorry, not the requirement, if that is the domain name or the origin that you're working on, then you are allowed to run with just HTTP. Number five, responsive. We want to make sure that the layout fits on any size screen. So you're adapting your fonts, you're adapting your images, you're adapting your layout to the space that's available. So you're building a responsive website. Now this isn't something that you're going to find in the progressive web app test, but it is something that truly to be a progressive web app, you need to be building a responsive layout. Number six, so accessible means that we're going to be meeting these guidelines, the web content accessibility guidelines. And this link is down in the description if you're looking for it. If you want to go through it, there's a lot of content on here talking about the requirements that you need to meet to have an accessible website. So we have to not just meet those guidelines, but make sure that our site is working with any sort of input. Uh, if somebody's using a screen reader, if somebody's using a keyboard, if that they can't use a stylus or touch or a mouse because they've got uh, mobility problems, issues with their hands, then we need to be able to work with a keyboard or voice control, which is doing speech to text. So we have to make sure that we're handling any sort of input here. So accessibility is important with a PWA as well. And our final one, discoverable, good search engine optimization. Um, we want to make sure that even though it's a PWA and you're installing it, people can still learn things about the site. And there's another test here in the Lighthouse window. If we generate a report for this, we can see it's going to run through this and it's going to give us a score for search engine optimization. Now, this is minimal CSS and HTML. Um, I've passed all the things, I got a good score, but that's only because I've got very little content on the page. It's very easy to get a good score when you don't have a lot of content. All right, and that's it. That is what makes a progressive web app. So hopefully that all makes sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I'll be making another video coming up um, on the web manifest file, how to put that together, what are all the different settings that you can put inside of that. So that's coming up, keep an eye out for that. And as always, thanks for watching.